Bear County is expanding efforts to fight opioid addiction in our community. Details on their efforts coming up. A fire breaks out on the west side, destroying a convenience store. How customers are reacting to this loss. And we've got good rain chances overnight. Some heavy rain in spots. We're going to talk about that forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. And we begin with a child finding a man dead in South Bear County this morning. Investigators say that they believe he was murdered sometime overnight. The crime scene unfolding right now on Sandy Circle and Post Oak View. And that's where we find our Devin Clark. He's standing by live to tell us what the Bear County Sheriff had to say just a few minutes ago. Devin. Well, David and Ursula, all the information that we have right now is preliminary, but we can tell you that the Bear County Sheriff's Office has investigators focusing efforts on that tan house about 20 yards behind me and also the backyard of that house. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says they got the call around 830 this morning and that call came from family members who came by the house on the way to drop kids off at school. They wanted to speak to the 37 year old man who lives here alone. Sheriff Salazar says that a young relative around the age of six years old found him dead in the backyard. Obvious signs of trauma to his body and investigators believe, as you said, that this happened at some point overnight. They did clear the house and did not find any more victims, but says part of the crime scene is also inside of the house. Now, Sheriff Salazar also wanted to emphasize that they do believe that this is a targeted attack, so it's not random. They don't believe that the community at, at large has anything to worry about and they are asking for the public's help. If you have any information on this crime, you are asked to call 335-6070. You can also visit bcsotips at bear.org. Again, bcsotips at bear.org, and you can remain anonymous. For now, reporting live in far south Bear County, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Devin. We have more developing news this noon, this time out of Seguin, where a two-year investigation has led to the indictment of 21 people on drug trafficking charges. Our Courtney Friedman just got out of our press conference at Seguin Police Department. So, Courtney, I understand this is a huge operation that resulted in these arrests. Yeah, absolutely, David. Just huge. And you can see some of what's been collected from these investigations just over the last two years. And this is just a small piece of it. This all started here in Seguin when Seguin police officers noticed an uptick in the methamphetamine arrests and seizures that were happening in their area. They contacted state and federal investigators, and then that led to a two-year investigation starting here, spanning the state of Texas, and then all the way to Mexico. Up until today, 47 people were arrested, and then today, investigators then released the names of 21 more targets, with charges ranging from intent to distribute meth, cocaine, and heroin, aiding and betting and conspiracy to launder money. Twelve of those people have been arrested and the officers are still searching for several others who are believed to be here, Austin, Fort Worth, and then in Mexico. The DEA, Seguin Police Chief, and Guadalupe County Sheriff all say the main issue by far is meth. Methamphetamine is really the scourge of the country right now. Everything that these gentlemen mentioned is as bad as it is, and what's making it worse is it's able to be produced in a location across the border at quantities and purity levels never seen before in the country. And it's powerful stuff, and we are awash in it. Now, this is clearly an ongoing situation. We're told there is more news to come within the, la the next three weeks, rather. And coming up tonight, we're going to talk about more of these main players. We'll show you some more of their pictures, talk about who they are and how they are connected to these massive drug operations down in Mexico. For now, I'm reporting live in Seguin. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. Thank you, Courtney. More to come on that. Meantime, more to come on the opioid epidemic. It is still a growing problem across the nation. And now Bear County is expanding a treatment program for those addicted to opioids. The medication assisted treatment pilot program will help people who battled opioid addiction behind bars and are now trying to re-enter the community. The program starts when someone is booked and continues all the way until they're released. Today, the Bear County Opioid Task Force is also getting approval for a syringe services program. You have to ask, why is the county investing in initiatives to fight opioid addiction? 
The best way to save somebody's life is to put them on the path to recovery, and we plan to do that. So that's what that's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is that we're talking about people's lives. That's a brother, a sister, a mother, a father. So uh, there's a humanitarian need here. The third is every time somebody's rearrested, that costs us more money as ta taxpayers. So if the humanitarian rationale doesn't work, it will save us money in the long run. And we've seen that in jurisdiction after jurisdiction. That is the chair of the Bear County Opioid Task Force. People in the medication assisted treatment program are going to be supervised, by the way, by a judge. It looks like the owners of a Westside convenience store will have to start all over again. A fire late last night destroyed their business in the 1300 block of Calabria Road. And as Katrina Weber tells us, it's also a big loss for the people in the neighborhood. They brought out their big guns. Still, firefighters' aerial water hoses were no match for the fire inside this West Side convenience store. It had a head start. When we got here, there was fire through the roof, burned out the whole roof. All the flames were like, they, they were so big. All you can hear is just like everything exploding. Curiosity had neighbors back out in the 1300 block of Culebra this morning, where they had seen that huge fire around 930 last night. They wanted to see the ruins of what had been a favorite store known as Food Mart Mom and Pops. These store people are really good to everybody that's over here. Yeah, Miss Mom and Pops. These two friends were caught off guard by it all. They say earlier it seemed to be business as usual. I passed by the store earlier from coming to get pizza and, you know, the store was closed and all of a sudden, about 45 minutes later, you know, we smell this when it flames. Although it says here that the business is open 24 hours a day, firefighters say it was actually closed at the time of the fire and that no one was inside. Because of the fire, there is no inside anymore. Firefighters say what's left of the building is unstable and will have to come down. We've applied a lot of water to make sure everything's out, so there's not going to be anything salvageable but the lot itself. As for how this fire started, that's a question arson investigators will have to answer. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We have some new details this noon about the arrest of a man who police say killed another man at an apartment complex on the northwest side earlier this year. 22-year-old John Anthony Sherahausen was arrested last night. He is accused of killing 30-year-old Anthony Sanks in the 8800 block of Cinnamon Creek back on January 7th. According to an arrest report, investigators found the victim had been talking to a man with the alias NHC Bobo via Facebook Messenger. Police say they were able to link that account to Sherhausen. The report also states the two men agreed to meet up to, quote, commit a violent crime against someone else. But when Sherhausen showed up, police say he shot and killed the victim instead. The arrest report says the suspect is also being investigated in yet another murder case. The results are in, and those likely to vote in the upcoming elections have spoken. Bear Facts, which is in partnership with KSET and the Brevard Report, interviewed 651 likely voters to get their takes on a number of issues affecting Bear County and the city of San Antonio. The big takeaway, most people have a positive view of where the city and county are headed, but that doesn't mean there aren't concerns. Homelessness, crime, and health issues are some of the big topics voters are concerned about. We caught up with Mayor Ron Nurberg today to get his reaction from the first ever Bear Facts poll. It's optimism mixed with a healthy dose of reality that we've got to continue to work hard to create a better future. That's why people want to see investments in public transportation. They want to see us solve a sustainable uh, path for the aquifer protection program. They want to see us continue to address education and poverty issues. Uh, so that's, that's the work that we're doing. It's a grind. You can see the results for yourself right now on KSET.com. And then today at 2.30, we will have analysts from the poll with our very own Steve Spreeser with the guests from Bear Facts and the Rivard Report. That'll be all on KSET.com.